It's our time, church, to honor our heritage. We have a savior. He gave it all on the cross. We stand beside martyrs who counted nothing as loss. They took God's mysteries, opened them up for us. Stephen, John the Baptist, Bonhoeffer, Jan Hus. Surrounded by a cloud of witnesses above, it's now our turn to model his unending love. Our mission is one we cannot confuse, nor muddy up with some trite excuse. You say you're not well-versed, ready, or able. I think Moses even tried to use that fable. The time we have, it's now more urgent. If we should hear, well done, faithful servant. Yeah, church, it's our time. It's our time to confess the ways we're mangled, the sins and selfishness that have us entangled. Lust, greed, and pride, their path leads to the grave. Yet we return to our sins as if we're a slave. Can we survive in this putrid dead sea? I quote Paul, may it never be. So let's cast aside our individual leprosy and begin to leave a biblical legacy. There's a glorious prize awaiting to be won, and the way to win is to start to run. Let's lace them up and fight the good fight, become to the world both salt and light. Our life on earth is merely a vapor. Our chapter must move from pen to paper. So church, let's get to writing because it's our time. It's our time, church. We have what it takes to help the world from its slumber awake. To Jesus, we are his beautiful bride. Whom shall we fear with him on our side? We have each other. We are not alone. It's iron to iron in the combat zone. There's a promise of life full of adventure. As long as we give both talents and treasure, the workers are few, the harvest is plenty, with so many lives running on empty. Scores of people trying to cope. They've come to the end of their proverbial rope. Young eyes are wandering, looking for direction. Make sure we point them to his resurrection. The clock's ticking. We're on our dime. Hey, church, rise up. It's our time. So, maybe you're thinking about making some big changes or setting some ambitious goals for yourself. Maybe you want to lose 20 pounds or read through the Bible. Maybe you want to run a marathon or repair a broken relationship. Whatever your big goal is, the temptation is to expect to go straight from here to here or from here to here. The reality is there are a lot of small steps between big decisions and big results. Challenges and obstacles await. At some point, you might even want to quit. But stand firm. Don't be disappointed with slow progress. Don't be overwhelmed by the destination. Rather, focus on what you can do today. Skip dessert. Read a chapter. Go for a run. Make a phone call. The more difficult the journey, the more rewarding the destination. And it can all start today with just one small step.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. good morning. And good morning for those of you here on site and for those of you who are uh, watching uh, from home online. So it is great to have the opportunity to be together again and uh, with one for, uh, purpose and focusing on the love of God. And uh, it is good that through the week we have been in touch and knowing how things are going, but it's so good that on Sunday, once again, we get together and uh, can uh, meditate on the Word of God together and worship Him together. So I encourage you, those at home that are watching, just uh, feel free to let the Holy Spirit to go into your heart and worship with us together, despite the uh, difference in time zones perhaps, or the distance, but it's good that we are in the same spirit worshiping our Lord. So let's pray before we get started because it is so important that we invite the Holy Spirit to this place, to wherever you are, so you can experience His presence, His love, His yes. protection, His provision. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come humbly this morning to you before your presence, Lord. We want to invite you to this place and wherever my brothers and sisters are watching, that in the middle of their home, that your Holy Spirit will be there so tangible that they could experience the same spirit that we are going to be experiencing yeah. here, Lord. And we want to invite you to take place, to take control of this place, that you get in every heart, in every mind, that we will find today, this morning, as an oasis for all what we have going through this week, perhaps has been really tiring, very exhausting, perhaps very worrying, perhaps we have faced all sorts of challenges, at work, at school, at home, in all sorts of senses. But Lord, this is a time where we can just come to you and just surrender completely. Not this only time, we can do that uh, in our homes and every day, but together. There is an importance uh, of being together, Lord, that we can encourage each other in your love, in your mercy, in your forgiveness, in everything, mm -hmm. Lord. So we want to open this space, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come and fill our hearts, to fill this space so we can just go through uh, and just get renewed, strengthened, and uh, that your perfect peace may be dwelling inside of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And for those of you that are at home, just open your hearts. The Lord has something special for you, and you can experience if you really want to experience that presence of the Lord. Let me read a verse that is in the, uh, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 26. And this verse is verse number 3. In my New International Version, it reads like this. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I had a different um, verse this morning as uh, we were preparing for what Dave is going to share today as well. Uh, but all of a sudden, in the middle of the car, that verse came back to me again. We had been meditating last night as well. And we just realized that, well, perhaps it was going to be good just to share it again. Because how many of us need peace in our hearts, peace in our minds? Really, this week has been, for many of us, a very stressful, stressful week. And it continues to be for several of our brothers and sisters at church. And in Mexico, in our country, wherever we have family and friends. And something I just want to share with you is that, um, yes, there is worry, there is anxiety, there are concerns, there is so many different things that we have to face. And the challenges that we are facing every day are not little. But this morning, as a reminder that the perfect peace comes from our Lord. The perfect yeah. peace That's comes perfect. from us whose minds, and we need to make sure that our minds 
remain fixed, remain stable, remain, uh, I mean, in all, at all times in our Lord, in the Word of God, knowing that we can trust Him, knowing that everything is going to be fine, no, knowing that whatever the outcome of the different situations that we are facing, God is in control, and He has the best for each one of us, for our families, for our friends, for our country, and for the world. So my encouragement for each one of you today is that keep, uh, fix your eyes, your hearts, your minds, your spirit in the Lord, yeah. because He is there for us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Mm -hmm. He is the only one who can mm -hmm. give us peace in the midst of the storm, mm -hmm. in the midst of the different situations that we are facing, in the midst of all what we have to face in every area of our life. Mm -hmm. Let the peace of God to get into your heart, into your mind, knowing that everything is going to be fine if we continue trusting Him. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, well, that is my encouragement for you this morning. And, uh, well, now let's get our hearts and our mind ready for worshiping Him. He is waiting for us just to go and be, I, went, I was going to say wild, but not in a bad way. We just need to make sure that the uh, King David was doing when he was worshiping, that he didn't care about what other people was thinking about him. Oh God, I mean, he was the king and he was just going mad. But because he knew that he was worshiping the king of kings and the Lord of lords, yeah. and the Lord was rejoicing because yeah. David was worshiping with all his heart. So yeah. are we ready to do the same? So, well, over to Rachel now. And we thank God uh, for Rachel's life, who is uh, helping us now with all the at technology this morning, so God bless you, Rachel. So, okay, let's go now and turn over to you for guiding us with it.
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what we have heard this morning. That's yeah. what we have to do when we are in the presence of the Lord. Right there in the midst of your room, in the midst of your uh, um, yeah. home. I mean, just I mean, sing a little louder that the Lord can hear your heart. Just I mean, overwhelming of love and praise to Him. Amen. So well, we thank God for what uh, He's doing in our lives and uh, for His uh, mercy and love. And well, right now we are getting ready for the next activities that we are having. The Lord is good and he has prepared for us a banquet, right? Because the word of God is always life and it's like, it's so sharp. It's like a, a double-edged sword, right? So we have to listen carefully to the word of God this morning. So right now, um, I just would like to say that if there is any testimony, anything that anyone wants to, to talk or say, this is the right time, okay? And remember that we always want to pray. We are a church that really believes in prayer. Amen. And we have our WhatsApp group, our connections, anytime that we need. I mean, something, I mean, the church is there praying for each other. So please, if there is anything that you want uh, or you need uh, during the week, just contact us, okay? So we are happy to pray for each other. So, anyone wants uh, to share any testimony, anything? No? A bit shy this morning? <laughs> okay, you. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so, we had a pretty full on day yesterday. Oh, we went yeah. to see my mum, <laughs> thinking we were going to do it because she came out of hospital on Monday. Uh, she had gone back in on Thursday afternoon, and they sent her home at midnight. On her own, um, and then Friday and Saturday she she was just going downhill. So <clears throat> the battle yesterday was it started with a call to one the carers, then a call to one one, then a phone call from a nurse, then a phone call from a doctor, then them saying the doctor had to come out, and then taking her to A and E, and it took all day. <laughs> so we got home at one this morning. Um, the testimony is in the midst of that. A little, a little, a little bit of kindness. Um, when we got to A and E, Dave, I'm just getting him in and out of the car. Oh my word! Thank goodness Dave was there. I didn't go on the end. Um, <clears throat> once I got her into A and E, she was triaged. Well, eventually she was triaged, uh, and I was allowed with her because I'd got I'd got her in a wheelchair. They they were obviously was loitering outside in the car. And we'd left the dog at my mother's. Interesting. He's never been left there before. Um, but he did fine. He was really, really good. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the nurse that triaged her said, okay, because she'd gone in on the GP referral letter, um, she would have to be seen by the medics. So she wasn't really in A&E. She was there and waiting for a medical review. Mm -hmm. So he said, um, so that will be within four hours. Mm -hmm. This is 11 o'clock. <gasps> so I was like, huh? So without wishing to upset my mother further, I did say, oh my goodness, you know, mm -hmm. you were going to need to go back to Surrey about five. And he said, mm. anyway, I, I took her back to the waiting room. <clears throat> wasn't quite sure how to break this to Dave outside in the car. Um, and he, he called me back and he said, I will just see if there's any way we can take it into A&E. There's a room where a nurse would be able to keep an eye on her. Anyway, he came back in a minute and he said, bring her round. Mm -hmm. And he took her into a room. Which meant we could go and leave her and go and get the dog and lock up and... Four days right back. But that little bit was Amen. so Amen. Praise so God. Awesome. Yes. God's help and patience. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> don't know whether you've ever had a week where you look at your week and think, uh, how am I going to get through this? Yeah. Probably we've all had that recently at some point or other. And uh, I looked at my Tuesday on Monday night and I thought, I don't know how I'm going to get through Tuesday. I had to write two presentations that I hadn't written. Um, I had to do meetings. I had back-to-back -back all the way through the day. And I could, uh, Teddy, my, our dog, woke us up early. So I thought, oh, well, I'll get, I'll get up. And I sat down to write the presentation. It was just like, before I'd even had a cup of coffee, and bang, it was done. What I think would have taken me three or four hours normally, it was done in 20 minutes. 
I did the first meeting and then I had an idea in the middle of the meeting. Just popped into your head. Have you ever had that happen when an idea has popped in your head? Thank you, God. So I, I did a quick bit of research, thought, oh, okay, that's a good thing. Second presentation done in 20 minutes again. I got through the day and I thought, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Thank you for getting me there. The testimony's back to you. So if you think you can't get through the day, ask God to help you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you for those testimonies. And again, the Lord is amazing. Um, well, I have one, but I'm not going to give a testimony because I'm pretty sure that my mother would like to give it, and so you are going to listen to, to that one twice. So I just want to say thank you, Lord, because mother had a surgery this past week and everything went really well, so I'm just pleased and Thank, uh, thankful to the Lord and for all your prayers because you have been so good. I mean, texting and, and praying for her. So I just want to say big, big thank you, family in Christ. Okay, and we will hear her testimony later. Okay, all right. So well, I think um, we are ready for the children to go to their Sunday school. And thank you, Julie, for all what you do with the children and the the classes that she prepares and she sends. So uh, they are having uh, the class online. So I really hope that all the children that are watching now, I mean, can go and, and spend some time now with, with Julie. Amen? So that is amazing. Uh, one more thing that we normally do after our, our worship, and it's also a, a way of worshiping our Lord, is with our tithes and, uh, and offerings. So um, many uh, are already doing that online, and uh, here we have a basket. So we just want to encourage you to continue to be uh, partners in building the kingdom of God because what we are doing, what we are bringing uh, into the offering basket helps, I mean, to extend the kingdom to make sure that we keep uh, as a church supporting and helping transforming lives. So we thank you for that. So we just want to pray now I mean, for those offerings and tithes that have been uh, already collected. And uh, if you want to do that, I mean, go to our website. You will find a way where you can click and find uh, very easy to, to donate. So, Father, right now we just want to pray for the offerings, for the tithe, because that comes from your provision. That comes from our hearts saying, thank you for what you are giving us, for what you are providing for us. I pray, Father, that every family in this place will have abundant provision mm -hmm. at their homes, on food on their tables, Lord, and that everything that they uh, uh, want to do in terms of activities, projects, etc., will be abundantly blessed. So thank you, Lord, for what you do in our families, in our homes, and food on our tables, and every the provision that comes from you, Lord. Even in the midst of the pandemic situation, we have seen your powerful hand upon us, Lord. So thank you for that and helping us, Lord, to be uh, good stewards of uh, what you are entrusting us uh, for your kingdom expansion. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you. Amen. Amen. Are we ready to listen to the word of God? Yes. Yeah. And we thank God for uh, our pastor's life. So we uh, pray for day. So the Holy Spirit might uh, guide him through this uh, uh, thing this morning, that it is a really good one. And I was just browsing this morning as we were getting ready for today as well. And uh, let's get our hearts prepared. Amen. So, Father, we pray for today. Thank you for what you have already placed in his heart to share with us tomorrow, today. So, Father, right now I just pray that you empower him that you enable him, that he will be sharing exactly the same way as you uh, gave him in his heart for us to be transformed in our lives, to be enriched in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Over to you. Thank you, Letty. Morning, church. I just want to click on the title slide, please, Rachel. That'd be great. That'll get the recording going, ready for the podcast. Our theme for January is It's a New Day. Did you know today's a new day? Yes. Whatever happened yesterday, and Julia described what our day was like yesterday, it's a new day today. Amen. And we can carry forward all the rubbish from yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before if we want to. 
But I'll be really honest with you, I get tired of that. I get tired of carrying the past with me. I want to carry celebrations forward, I want to carry good memories forward, but I want to leave behind the things that need to be left behind. So my title for today is Forgive, It's a New Day. Or maybe you want to turn it around the other way and say, It's a New Day, Forgive. Whichever way you want to take those two pieces, just put them together and say, it's a new day, forgive. Forgive, it's a new day. Now, the first thing, I, whenever I talk to people, one-on-one or praying with people, I say, I just, is there anything you need to forgive somebody for? The first response I always get is a hedgehog response. <laughs> ah, no! no, no, no. And, and typically that's a great sign to me that there is something that needs to be forgiven. You know, I, 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 had a, I, had, I had a problematic knee. I had a bike accident when I was 15, and the nerves inside my knee were quite close to the surface. So whenever you touched my knee, I kicked out. You know when you go to the doctors and they test your knee and they tap your knee just to t- test your reflexes are working? Yeah. Every time they came to that test, whenever I had to go to the doctors, I'd say, don't test this knee, because <laughs> I will kick you. <laughs> don't test this knee, because I will, I will launch you across the room. And I had one doctor who said, well, I, I, I need to test your reflexes, sir. I said, well, okay, but I have warned you. He tapped my knee and my knee went out and I kicked him in the face. And it wasn't my fault. It's just my reflexes responding. Because there was a nerve very close to the surface that every time he touched it, there was a reaction. And it's the same with unforgiveness. Unforgiveness sits very close to the surface. And when people come and say, you know, you keep on talking about that. Is there something you need to let go Oh, no, there is no, no, yeah, the hedgehog response comes again. Or maybe if you prefer, for those in North America, the porcupine response. Um, and then, then comes a but or something. But you don't understand, Dave, what he did to me, what she did to me. Um, they lied to, about me again and again and again. She, she, wanted to, she wanted to beat me. She wanted to get my job. You can't imagine the struggles that I've been through. Well, probably I can't. But we can still forgive. If you only knew what this has done to me inside, you'd be angry too, trying to get me on side and join them in their unforgiveness. And you've probably had similar kind of comments, similar kind of things said. And so I'm going to take us through some scriptures just to explore some principles here. Um, and, and there's one final phrase that I've heard a number of times. I can never forgive them. Mm. There's something that has almost become unforgivable. And I want to start with the picture that I have, which is we as human beings, when Pilate said, who do you want to send to the cross? Barabbas or Jesus? They said, Jesus, Jesus. As mankind, we put the Son of God on the cross. And God forgave us. God has forgiven us and God will forgive us for the things that we do wrong, even though we choose unholy and ungodly things. So let's look at our first scripture here. And you might imagine I'm going to have to look at the screen so I haven't printed them out. But here's Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, from the Lord's Prayer, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Pretty tough, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Pretty tough. Now forgive so that you can know forgiveness. Doesn't mean that God doesn't forgive us, or does it? The Father will also forgive you. The Father will also forgive you. You know, it's good to model forgiveness. If you've got young children, if you've got nieces and nephews, you know, if something happens and there's a place to forgive somebody, do it in the open. I don't mean in public in front of church, but in front of your children. Show them what forgiveness is. I think forgiveness is a very hidden thing too. We like to make it all private. Oh, you hurt me, so I'll have a private conversation. I'm not saying we need to do all of it in public, but let's model it with our children. Let's model it with the next generation. Let's model it with unbelievers. I remember being in another leader's house one day and we'd be having a meeting um, and we were just about to go. I think everybody had left. I think I was the last person to leave. And, and, and then a quick, quick phone call happened and the pastor's wife got this phone call and there was a discussion going on between the pastor and his wife and they were having a bit of a disagreement. 
And I said, I'll leave. And they said, no, no, Dave, stay. Just stay for a few more minutes. And they, they resolved it. And then they, they said sorry to one another for being a little angry. They said, thanks, Dave. Could you just pray for us? And we'll, then we'll, we go. I said, why did you want me to stay? I said, well, we didn't want you to just see us start having a disagreement and then leave thinking we're in trouble. Just wanted to journey with you. And so I, I want to encourage you. Sometimes it's good and healthy to see forgiveness flow, to see life in reality. Let's forgive. Let's look at our next scripture. Where do we find this? We find this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, mm. even as God in Christ forgave you. Mm. And that's an all inclusive you. Mm. It's not just some of us, it's just not the good people, it's not just the people who have, uh, 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 have got it all together, it's the people who've not got it together too. Christ is even more glorified mm. when those who have been through tough things come to a place of healing and wholeness. When somebody's able to forgive something dreadful. And I, I think about one or two stories that I've seen in the press over the last few years where a Christian parent has come on and said, I, I forgive the person who killed their son. I just think that's a strong, that's a bold thing. But they were wanting to model something. I believe they were all Christians, the ones I'm talking about. And they, they'd they obviously been challenged by the Holy Spirit to live out their brokenness and their forgiveness in public. It's a tough thing to do. And some people would say, how can you do that kind of thing? But we've got to keep on modelling it. We've got to keep on doing it. And it starts with a place of tender-heartedness. I'm not saying we have to agree and understand exactly how somebody came to hurt us. But just a softening towards that is the beginning of forgiveness. And as, a forg as forgiveness begins, forgiveness can be completed in Christ. And as forgiveness can be completed in Christ then we can see breakthrough. There's another phrase that I often hear where people say, well, he, he doesn't deserve to be forgived, forgiven. Well, I'll be honest with you, how many of us deserve to be forgiven? None. Very few of us. Let's look at the next scripture then to remind us and to help us to explore. In Colossians 3 verse 13, how do we forgive? By bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Mm. You'll also find it says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will also be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. This is in Luke 6 verse 37. Jesus laid it out on the Sermon on the Mount. As he said, you know, blessed. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will also not forgive you. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then we go on to read, because you, you're probably going to start to say to me, because I'm talking about the F word. Dave, don't talk to me about the F word, and I'm talking about forgiveness here, <laughs> just to be clear. But people say, don't talk about forgiveness, because it's a, a prickly problem. In 1 Peter 4, verse 8, above all things, so this is over everything else, have fervent love. Not just a little bit of love, fervent love. I don't know whether you take one of those, uh, I don't know, I'm doing a bit of brand advertising here now, but something like a Barocca, mm -hmm. one of those things you put it in a water and it gives you vitamins and everything, mm -hmm. and it fizzes, and sometimes it, if, you, if, you put, if you have too much water in the glass, it just overflows. That, for me, is what fervent love is. Fervent love is when you pour a glass of champagne and the bubbles fill the glass and flow over the top because there's more inside and it wants to get out. There's more inside us that wants to get out if we will just let it. If we will allow the love of God to fill us, it will be fervent love. Now the thing about pouring a glass of champagne, the thing about pouring something in that's fervent and activated, is it overflows. Mm -hmm. And I want to say the same. If you ask God to fill you with his love, then it will overflow. And it will overflow probably in a messy manner. You know, you think about pouring anything into a jug or a glass and keep on pouring. It doesn't just come out of a 
a certain particular place, unless you've got a jug, in which case that's the whole point of it, is to make it come out of a particular place. But it just comes out all over the place. I believe the same with fervent love. Fervent love over, overflows. And it's good. Please don't let Stand along, if, if, you, if you're feeling unlovable, stand alongside someone who's full of God's love. You'll catch some of the overflow. Fervent love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. It doesn't say love hides a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of sins. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean love ignores a multitude of sins. Mm-hmm. Part of the thing about love is straight talking. Let's say somebody has got into a particular habit of saying a particular phrase to you. Oh, you're no good at this. You, you work for someone and they, you, yeah, yeah, you, you can't do spreadsheets, can you, Dave? Oh, yeah, you're no good with, with Excel, are you? Well, okay. I just want to take a moment and in love just say, do you know, that I find that quite provocative, quite hurtful. You keep on saying that. Actually, if you genuinely believe that I could do better with Excel... And maybe I need some training, or maybe you could show me. You know, but but it starts with some truth. It starts with actually, you know, don't don't wait until the volcano's filled up and you go. Bleh. Oh, you always say that I, I hate you, and suddenly we say things that we don't want to say. Find a place, find a place where you can say, do you know what? That's been pretty. So we cover it with love. We don't ignore it. We call it for what it is. Think about, think about how, you, how you go to bed at night. You cover yourself with your duvet or your blankets to keep all the warmth in. And when it's hot, you throw them off. But we cover ourselves with love. And love is all-encompassing. Love is all-encompassing. Part of the reason we don't forgive is we don't understand forgiveness. We don't understand the power of forgiveness. We, we want to hold on to, well, I was right and they were wrong. We want to win. Forgiveness is not about winning, an individual winning. Forgiveness is about God being glorified and about us all winning together. Rachel, let's click on to the... Oh, well done, great. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. In the chapter on the book of love, we read about love is kind, love is patient. And in verse 5 it says, love does not behave rudely. It doesn't react, does not seek its own, and is not provoked. It thinks no evil. So instead of defaulting to they're wrong and I'm right, let's just find a place and say, do you know what? We both said some wrong things in that discussion. Let's see if we can just put it right. Let's say sorry. And sometimes... And this is where I love the illustration of our hands. You know, we get into finger pointing. When we want to blame people, we start pointing, you said this, and, you, and suddenly we've got two fingers, and we've got the war of fingers going on. Mm-hmm. But I, I want to be very careful whenever I point. Sometimes it's good to point, but I tend to use my whole hand. Um, but if you start pointing a finger, just think there's three other fingers pointing back at you. So who are you pointing at? And actually, forgiveness often starts by somebody saying, do you know what? I probably shouldn't have said that, sorry. And then somebody says, do you know what? I shouldn't have been so provocative. You're right. Can we forgive one another? And then set a seal on it and pray. Don't just leave it as a bit of an open wound and when you kind of said, set a seal on it so it's not going to come back again. Because I do know that the enemy loves to come along and a bit like, this is a bit like when you've got a scab on your leg. You know what it's like when you've got a scab on your leg? You've cut yourself, the scab's healed, but the scab's now become really itchy. So you start scratching at it, picking at it, and suddenly you're bleeding again. And then infection can get in. The enemy is exactly the same with forgiveness. Now, if we keep on, he'll go, oh, see, I, see, she said that word again. I don't think she's really, he, he or she's forgiven you. Just comes back and niggles again. It's a bit like scratching that scab again. Could all go badly wrong. If you've forgiven one another and you set a seal on it, move on. Don't allow the echoes of the past to influence the the truth of today. So let's explore this in one further step as we go into a a story now in Matthew 18. 
Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. And what do you think? What did the Lord say? Jesus said to him, I, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. For, no, for those who are any good at mathematics here, or those who aren't, 490. We're up to 490 from seven. He went in with seven. Jesus comes back with 490. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle the accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. A lot of money. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him, forgave him his debt. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii, not quite so much. And he laid hands on him, in a, in a, in a bad way, I imagine, laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Do you recognise these words? Mm -hmm. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison, till he should pay the debt. Mm -hmm. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. I don't know what you think at this particular point in the story. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt that because you begged me. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, mm -hmm. just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers, until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father, okay, now we bring it back home. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Very visual story. And it's interesting that the servant of the master used exactly, the, the servant of the servant used exactly the same words as the servant of the master. Forgive as you have been forgiven. That's what I started off with this morning. Forgive as you have been forgiven. So the place we need to start in being able to forgive others is to know that we're forgiven. Mm. We know that we're forgiven. So we have to start with ourselves. It's a healthy place to start. Do I know that I'm forgiven? I don't mean if I upset Letty or upset Simon or somebody else. I don't mean that kind of forgiveness. I mean, I mean, know that I'm forgiven as a human. That God has forgiven me. Because that's why he sent his son Jesus. The transaction has been paid. The price has been paid. The sacrifice has been made. And so as we've been forgiven, now go out and forgive others. So the place, the strong place to start, is people, church, everyone, know that you're forgiven. And so, okay, as a believer, if you know that you're forgiven, if you come alongside those who don't, then you'll often find unforgiveness reigns. Because they don't know that they're forgiven. Now, sometimes if people are brought up in, God, in, in good ways and they've seen forgiveness modelled, they want to see an example of what God did for us. And so they will have learnt some good habits. But until we truly know that we've forgiven, it's pretty hard to forgive some tough issues and matters. And so let me start to pull this all together then with my final scripture. And it's this. Therefore I say to you, and so this is the story from Luke, um, when Jesus was talking about forgiveness. And therefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Mm -hmm. Let's get a grasp of forgiving others. Let's love one another mm -hmm. and Get a grasp of how God sees other people. And then let's pray. And let's do, let's forgive. 
So let me close with some, some, some um, a summary, just a few things. And I've kind of tried to make this a bit memorable. Forgive, it's a new day. Firstly, forgive because it's good for you. Unforgiveness will lead to bitterness. Bitterness will lead to acid stomachs. And there's a whole bunch of very clear evidence that if we walk around with unforgiveness, then ultimately that will affect our health. If you want to challenge me about that, I'm happy to point you to some papers, some medical papers that talk about those kind of things. They're not Christian papers. They're just saying, you know, if you live with unforgiveness, if you, look, you know, pe people who have had major things happen in their life, and it affects their health. It affects their, their mental well-being as well. So forgive firstly because it's good for you. Firstly, then forgive because it's good for the other person. I couldn't work out how to say this, so I said them. I don't, I, I don't mean us and them, but you know, if you've forgiven yourself first, and if you've known forgiveness, then if you can forgive others, it's good for them too. And then two, it's important to understand that if we model forgiveness, if we show forgiveness, if we live forgiveness, it changes the economy, the environment, the world that we live in. I've seen examples, when I was a primary school teacher, I've seen examples uh, of a child hurting another child, completely accidentally, running across the playground, bang! You know, one child wasn't looking where the other was going, he was, playing, he was focused on the football, knocked the child over, and they got up, and the child was crying, and you know, as, as the playground, su playground supervisor at that particular point, I went across, and this child was already saying, I'm really sorry, I didn't, mean, I didn't see you. You know, was, was almost upset that this other child was so upset. But then the child had been knocked over, went on and... I can't remember... What, uh, they, they, they tripped over again as they were running across the playground, and they head-butted the child in front... Their, their head went into the child's another child's stomach. So they, they were so kind of excited, and they ran, and, and they immediately said, oh, I'm sorry. And you just saw this kind of skittles or things being knocked over, that forgiveness was getting multiplied across the play, playground. So forgive because it's good for the economy, it's good for the environment. It's a new day. Forgive. Let me pray. Father, thank you that you first showed us that we can forgive because you forgave us. And so, Father, we start with a place of thankfulness and we say, Lord, thank you. Father, thank you for sending your son. Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die in my place. Jesus, thank you for being obedient to your father and going to the cross and dying for my sin. Mm -hmm. That I might know freedom. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that I can know that freedom, that forgiveness, on a daily basis. Keep on reminding me that I'm forgiven, Father God. Keep on letting me know that I'm forgiven. And as I'm forgiven, let it overflow to others, that they might know that they're forgiven too. And Father, I pray for healing and wholeness to flow from today, for these moments, as a result of this word, as you've sowed it in my heart, let forgiveness flow. Mm -hmm. Let your kingdom come. Let your will yeah. be done yeah. on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Part, part of the principles of the kingdom, as it's said in Corinthians 13, love. And as love flows, forgiveness flows too. We get beyond ourselves. And so, Father, I want to pray. That for everybody listening, both now in the room and later, they can say, it's a new day. Forgive. The way to walk in the day. And then to the end of the day, they can say, I have forgiven. So it's a new day. And Father, I want to pray for everyone yeah. who has something that they're wrestling with. Mm. that they just can't do on their own. Lord, would you help them? Would you send someone or would you get them to ask someone? I can't do this on my own. Because Lord, you provide supernaturally friends, angels, your presence, Lord, yeah. to help us to find healing and wholeness in your mighty name. Amen. Amen.
you want to do the notices, won't you? Okay. So, notices for this week. Let me get my visual illustration then. Chocolates. Um, and I'd like to add a, a, another dimension to chocolates. Um, I know Norman, who faithfully pulls together the family album every, every, every week. He always reaches out, has anybody got a picture? I'm going to ask Norman each, each month to nominate the best contributor for the month. And so whoever contributes... <laughs> So it's, I'm giving Norman power, the power of chocolate. Ooh. I reached out to him yesterday and said, Norm, we're obviously struggling to get some pictures here. What do you suggest? And he said, chocolate. So, okay. <laughs> I took him at his word. And what I'm saying to you, church, is if you want, send pictures to Norm, they'll end up in the family album. Why do we do that and from the family album point of view? I'm just trying to keep everybody connected. What's going on in your world? It doesn't have to be anything more than I baked a cake yesterday. We went for a walk yesterday. We saw the picture of Elizabeth going out for a walk when she was at work and found some beautiful nature. If you found something beautiful, put it in there, share it with Norman. It's going to bless us and it keeps us in touch. So please do share with us. So, okay, so what's the memory verse from last week? Does anybody remember? I think we've got a bit of a clue. Rachel, you can bring up the first slide. Yeah, 1 John 4.16. Anybody remember it? Yes, man. Okay, let's do this proper. One of the things I've realised is that when we do things in the room, we've got to make sure that the people at home can <coughs> hear as well. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to have a go? Is it because you've got the wrong kind of chocolates? If, you put one of, if, if you've got a favourite chocolate... I'm oh, sorry, I just realised I'm not on camera. If you've got a favourite chocolate, let me know. We can put your favourite chocolates in there. That might motivate you to then have a go. So do you want to bring that verse up then, Rachel? Just the full verse there. Thank you. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. Well, this is a great foundation. It was, it's interesting that I picked it off the back of Simon's... Um, sermon last week and then it's great foundation for this week's um, sermon I don't know whether anybody's noticed I don't know whether you pay attention to the small print but we've started changing some of the words around the screens so on the bottom of a number of our screens now for 2022 it talks about hearts touched, lives changed, God glorified so I don't know whether you're a mathematician or an economist if you like equations there's an equation for you I don't know where you put the pluses and equals but Hearts touch, lives change, God glorified. Put it on your screensaver. Put it out there. We're going to design one or two screensavers and put it out and send it out to people, just so that we can put it on people's phones and encourage us as we think about these things. Because you know, if we touch someone's heart, lives are changed. God is glorified. Okay, our week this week, um, as usual, and I, the reason some people might say, Dave, why do you keep on telling us about the week? We know about it, but. There could always be somebody new watching online. So what, what, what goes on in church in the week? So it's just great to remind us. And everybody's welcome to every one of these meetings. You probably need to speak Spanish to go to the prayer meeting on Saturday. But if you speak Spanish, can contact with Letty. You can just get on there. Every one of these meetings, all you need to do is go to the church calendar, click on the link, and you're in. So daytime Bible study on Tuesday, evening Bible study on Wednesday. We had a great conversation on Wednesday last week. We really got into uh, looking at um, making different choices. Crossing the threshold was our theme last Wednesday night. And then prayer, and prayer really matters at the moment. Our, our inbound requests to pray, we, we're getting prayer requests from completely outside the church now, plus the internal request, plus being on the list. And if you don't know what the list is, um, it's something that has kind of grown as a term around, I think, me and Julia, but I think other people have adopted it now. We've got non-Christian friends who say, can we go on your list? What does that mean? Well, we've said to people, when they, when they often share something, Granny's sick or so, you know, something significant going, we'll, we'll pray for that. We'll put it on the list. That was the word that we used. And so they now have kind of cut out the pray for it. They said, please, can we go on the list? I say, you can go on the list as long as you let us know when it's completed, because otherwise we'll pray forever, and our list will just get longer. It's great, and that's testimony. And testimony does not only have to come from non-Christians. From, sorry, from Christians. If I've prayed for a non-Christian, and that prayer's been answered, and they tell me about it, they're testifying God back to me. Just a thought. So what we're studying in our Bible studies, 
um, in, on, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays is uh, with Max Susado, we're looking at life, and um, John Altberg on Wednesday nights, we're looking at all the places to go. It's about a journey and choices and junctions and those kind of things. So please feel free. And if you come once, you don't have to stay for the rest. If it's not for you, come to the next one. We're always changing it. Every six weeks or so, um, there's a new theme, um, and we're doing different studies at different times. Our visiting speakers are um, all lined up, for, nearly all lined up for next year. Peter Butts, the week after next, he's going to come and speak to us. He's a great guy. I, I've ministered in Uganda a number of times with him. Um, and he's just fervent for the Lord. So looking forward to him coming and spending time with us. I'm um, bringing all different nationalities, different um, men and women, um, and young and old. So um, please be encouraged as we bring these men and women in to encourage us. And my memory verse, I think that's the last one, isn't it? My memory verse for today is 1 Peter 4, 8. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Let's see. Over to you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, what an amazing journey we have had this morning, right? I mean, thinking about forgiveness and... Uh, and I'm pretty sure that each one of us, for sure, have someone in our heart that we need to meditate on what uh, Dave has uh, shared today. So keep thinking about that and let uh, forgiveness to come to you. As they said, it's good for you, it's good for me, it's good for all the other person. So, so that's really good. Okay, so well, we are coming to the end of our service. We are, I believe that we have another song that we are going to uh, sing now. And after that, do we have any birthdays for this coming week? Nothing. So, oh, Karen, okay. So, oh, is, is that going to be your, uh, what, what exactly? Today. Today, woo! <laughs> well, we are going to sing to you, okay? Well, let's go first to our, um, to our song. Uh, well, no, we have the happy birthday. So let's, let's do the happy birthday first, okay? So, Karen, we, we thank God for your life. It is great to have you as part of our family. We are really blessed. And uh, well, let us uh, congratulate you today and say happy birthday. Um, let's let's sing now, okay? One, uh, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Karen. Happy birthday to you. Awesome. All right, so let's sing our last song and then we are going to sing.
never failed me yet and his mercy is new every morning so we thank you Lord for what you have been doing our in our lives mm -hmm. thank you for today's service thank you for the fellowship that we are having thank you for every single one mm -hmm. of my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. here and for those of you who are watching online May the love of God bless you mm -hmm. and be with you and your families. May his protection, his provision, his faithfulness, his healing upon you uh, today and forevermore. We thank you, Lord, for uh, our today's service, for everything that has been said and shared. Lord, may your word be uh, making a nest in our hearts, in our minds and help us to forgive the same way that you had already forgiven us. Lord, we thank you for yeah. today and uh, we just pray that our week ahead will be full of blessing. I know that we are still having challenges to face every day, but your power, your love is with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. So we thank you for coming today and have a wonderful week ahead. Okay. God bless you. Bless you. It's our time. We must rise up and no longer despair. It's our time, church, to honor our heritage. We have a savior. He gave it all on the cross. We stand beside martyrs who counted nothing as loss. They took God's mysteries, opened them up for us. Stephen, John the Baptist, Bonhoeffer, Jan Hus. Surrounded by a cloud of witnesses above, it's now our turn to model his unending love. Our mission is one we cannot confuse, nor muddy up with some trite excuse. You say you're not well-versed, ready, or able. I think Moses even tried to use that fable. The time we have, it's now more urgent. If we should hear, well done, faithful servant. Yeah, church, it's our time. It's our time to confess the ways we're mangled, the sins and selfishness that have us entangled. Lust, greed, and pride, their path leads to the grave. Yet we return to our sins as if we're a slave. Can we survive in this putrid dead sea? I quote Paul. May it never be. So let's cast aside our individual leprosy and begin to leave a biblical legacy. There's a glorious prize awaiting to be won, and the way to win is to start to run. Let's lace them up and fight the good fight, become to the world both salt and light. Our life on earth is merely a vapor. Our chapter must move from pen to paper. So church, let's get to writing because it's our time. It's our time, church. We have what it takes to help the world from its slumber awake. To Jesus, we are his beautiful bride. Whom shall we fear with him on our side? We have each other. We are not alone. It's iron to iron in the combat zone. There's a promise of life full of adventure. As long as we give both talents and treasure, the workers are few, the harvest is plenty, with so many lives running on empty. Scores of people trying to cope. They've come to the end of their proverbial rope. Young eyes are wandering, looking for direction. Make sure we point them to his resurrection. The clock's ticking. We're on our dime. Hey, church, rise up. It's our time.
So, maybe you're thinking about making some big changes or setting some ambitious goals for yourself. Maybe you want to lose 20 pounds or read through the Bible. Maybe you want to run a marathon or repair a broken relationship. Whatever your big goal is, the temptation is to expect to go straight from here to here or from here to here. The reality is there are a lot of small steps between big decisions and big results. Challenges and obstacles await. At some point, you might even want to quit. But stand firm. Don't be disappointed with slow progress. Don't be overwhelmed by the destination. Rather, focus on what you can do today. Skip dessert. Read a chapter. Go for a run. Make a phone call. The more difficult the journey, the more rewarding the destination. And it can all start today with just one small step.
it's our time. We must rise up and no longer disparage. It's our time, church, to honor our heritage. We have a savior. He gave it all on the cross. We stand beside martyrs who counted nothing as loss. They took God's mysteries, opened them up for us. Stephen, John the Baptist, Bonhoeffer, Jan Hus. Surrounded by a cloud of witnesses above, it's now our turn to model his unending love. Our mission is one we cannot confuse, nor muddy up with some trite excuse. You say you're not well-versed, ready, or able. I think Moses even tried to use that fable. The time we have, it's now more urgent. If we